All right, today I wanted to mess around a little bit more with DWM. I'm kind of addicted to hacking on it because I can just kind of change anything and everything with it uh, with the assistance of some C programming. But like when you look at like ChatGPT, it's just so darn good. I'm like, why wouldn't you do that? It's kind of amazing. So I kind of want to just mess around with my system a little bit more. I have it up to where I'm on anything and I'm launching you can see my face up here, the Twitch chat right here, um, that would fill in once people jump into chat, and I never have to worry. So, like, if I come to a new one, let's say I launch like Steam, it would just automatically shift all of chat over into the right side, which would be totally awesome. Ashley, what's up? Evening. So, I, I mean, I kind of dig that. I love the the layouts. I, I don't know. I'm just addicted to hacking around in this. So much so, like, you look at my stats this week, and it's been like, I have just done C programming almost all week. <laughs> um, I've done some Lua, Bash, and C Sharp uh, for the toolbox and stuff. But I, I don't know. I, I really love just making, like, my own window manager specifically for streaming and the studio out here it's it's kind of awesome <laughs> so i'm like what else can i do what else is on my dream list what have i ever wanted my computer to do and operate like and just kind of start thinking those things up and uh now i'm almost to the point where i like i think i have almost my whole wish list and now i'm like all right, we got the wish list, but all right, I guess we make it easy for everybody else now. So, like, what would people want to know about this, this setup I have? I think <laughs> next on the agenda is open season. One of these days, Ashlyn, one of these. Well, we do need a test to see how well it works on open Sousa, you know? Like I said, this type of setup would work in any system, any Linux system, hands down, because it's just a C binary, which works on anything and everything. So I'm like, okay, um, let's shift this over into Workspace 3, Workspace 2, Workspace 1. I think we make a help guide, right? I think people would want to know, like, what if we hard coded well i mean like there's a couple ways we could do like a pop-up help guide besides the easy way out which would be just a wiki you know that'd be super easy i guess we could do like a dunst type setup um what is it dunst notify um oh really there's no tldr and dunst dunst help I thought that you could do a Dunst Notify type thing. Yeah, that'd be fun. Do you have a Nordic theme configured for QT5 and QT6 and GTK3? Um, I don't know. I think I do need to upload like my Nordic backgrounds I have going on here. That would be a good idea. Uh, because I do love my Nordic themes. Hmm. All right. A pop-up guide probably would be ideal. Maybe, what if we made a pop-up window, maybe we, we code the pop-up window in C uh, that would list all the, the hotkeys for DWM. I like that idea. Like, let's just look over here and oh, I kinda wanna just code that real fast and see see what kind of shenanigans i can get into there um make a dwm patch that binds mod key plus f1 to a pop up window that lists all the hot keys in the config.h Let's see what it says. What, what do you think, ChatGPT? You think it'll go with the Dunst side of things? You think it'll code its own thing and see? That would be kind of cool. Yeah. Function show keys. Okay, so then you define... Okay, it's going with its own function and see. 
I like it. Interesting. Oh, using Conky would be another way. Conky's pretty old. Has it? That's another way of doing it. Conky uh, Linux. Let's see. How old is Conky these days? What was the last time? Oh, no, it's, it's still updated. All right. Lightweight system monitor. Conky would be kind of cool. Oh, so this would just echo it into your terminal. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. That's actually not bad. Use this command to execute it. X term dash E less. So that's actually kind of cool. I kind of like the minimal approach here with this instead of using Conky. Because Conky, like, overlays on the desktop, I understand that people love them on, like, subreddits and stuff. But at the end of the day, I, like, cover up almost my whole desktop, almost always. And having, like, hotkeys on the desktop, like, toggling on and off, while it sounds like a good idea, in practice, I always find that it just doesn't really suit my needs. You know what I'm saying? I just don't think it's there. Huh. Oh, look at that. Narc, Narc, you, you formatting machines, man. What you using for your formatting of the machines? You doing like a fog machine setup? How do you, how many, you, how many you have to go? I've, I've been there late night on a Saturday formatting a bunch of machines for like a rollout. That's fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think let's try this method. I like the everything's hard coded in. I think I'll use kitty instead of Xterm, of course. But that is kind of neat. So under the keys list, let's just add this. Firstly, add new key binding that does that under keys. Let's do that section. Let's add our config.h. Let's come down into keys. Bam, all right. And we're gonna just output this guy mod key plus f1 and that's going to run the show keys function and not the spawn function and then we need to modify dwmc and we're going to add an entire new function in uh, which would be void show keys um need to define the show keys function in d i believe on this side of things when we define it um i thought we would have to put like function declarations like this static void or anything like that maybe uh like static void and then show keys in here with the constant arg constant arg arg argument so something like um, let's just take this, let's put it over here, and then instead of that, let's go show keys. So we're defining that in here, and then if we look down, let's, I guess we could add this at the bottom of it. Let's go show HIJK, okay, so that's cool. So then we just add this function, copy. <laughs> Updating this is going to be kind of a pain. Um, what if we pulled from config.h while we do this? I think it would be fun. Hey, bud, how's it going? Oh, I think we're going to have a fun, fun time here with this one. I think adding that would be neat. Can you pull all the hotkeys from config.h instead of listing them in dwm.c. See, I want to do them dynamically, I feel like. Oh, okay. So it wants to do list hotkeys. Oh, I see. I wouldn't even think to do it that way. So instead it executes the path to list hotkeys. This seems a little excessive because why wouldn't you just spawn this instead of creating the entire new function? Shouldn't you just spawn the sh script directly from config.h instead of having to do it this way? 
<laughs> this is this is where you get in trouble like the chat gpt jumping through hoops to do something that's really simple i mean i don't get me wrong i appreciate this idea but like the way it goes about implementing it um shouldn't we just use spawn in config.h instead of modifying ddwmc absolutely you're right it's more straightforward to, a way to avoid modifications <laughs> oh, there we go yes that that makes more sense to me i love it <laughs> all right cool oh no there we go i'm sitting here going that ah, seems weird it is late but i was like ah Let's see what we get with this. All right, so we have this show key thing. We're obviously not gonna do any of this. Get status. We only have config.h changed. So let's make the modifications there. But this time around, we're gonna make this modification. We'll see if this uh, script works. Um, I'm kind of curious to see if it does, but We'll see. Well, let's just make a new file. We'll put this here. We'll write this guy out. Um, uh, what, what are we naming this? List hotkeys.sh. Probably something like that would be fine. I don't know about the underscore. It seems a little excessive. But, well, all right, delete. And this is going to be config.h. Perfect. Now we'll modify this guy. We'll make... See, this is a, a different way of doing it. So normally, I would do the spawn command and then set the entire argument in here for the sh command. Which, you can see, that's done through sh cmd, but it's, it's not there, which is kind of interesting. But... It's not necessarily wrong to do it that way either. Um, now, to reference this on a global level will be the best way of doing it. So I don't want to hard code my path. I guess we could do like a home. And... Oh, I hate doing it like that, though. But I think we almost have to hard code that. Yeah, that should be pretty good. And we're going to do kitty instead of X term. Recursion. Thanks for the tier one. Oh, yeah. It's the last it's the last couple hours of September before all the subs go back to normal price. I forgot. It's hard to believe that October's already here, man. It snuck up on me this year. It's still been hot as crap here in Texas. It's still 90 degree days, so... All right, argument list keys under spawn. I think we'll do that. Ooh, so close. All right, so we're calling the list keys with a mod key that. And then we'll run this sh command under dwm titus under GitHub. That is where we are at, right? All right, home, GitHub, dwm titus. And then chmod list hotkeys. List hotkeys. <laughs> That's not helpful. <laughs> oh no. Um Yeah. Yeah, DWL is neat, but they don't even have a sys tray patch, and it's still pretty hacky. Um, we could look at it. I was actually uh before the stream doing it. I, everyone's obsessed with Wayland, but it's still, you know, it's still not there for me because I don't have my synergy. I don't have a couple other things. What is the synergy update on Wayland? Because I really need synergy fixed. I can't really do like the streams with two keyboards and mice. It just is too chaotic for me. So for me, Wayland's a no-go until I start actually getting 
some type of Synergy uh, fix. So we could do like a micro client. And the only way I can think is to do like Wainergy is the other one. But how Wayland's constructed, I don't think we'll ever, I don't know if we'll ever get a full functioning or fully working Synergy client. We can do client, but I don't know if we can ever do server. Let's see. Because the one I was looking at, see, this is old. Um, let's look for Wainergy. I think that's the closest one. Wainergy, I think it is. Is the closest thing that we have for a Synergy client for Wayland. But it's just the client, not the server. And I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, I'd be totally okay with it being better, but it it doesn't matter if it's better if I can't use the same tools I use in X. Xorg, right? So that's the problem. You're going to have, like, you have a lot of people, like, saying, hey, yeah, Wayland's better. Sure, I'm not going to argue with that. But if I can't use the same tools that I have over on Xorg, why the hell am I going to use Wayland? That's the problem. Like the tools have to get there. So while the base is finally maturing, the tools have to follow suit. And some of those tools are harder to build. Specifically, Synergy is a sticking point for me. If I could figure out something, I would totally do it. Totally. I just, you know, that's, that's the problem right there is I can't. Unless I do something myself, like I could maybe do like a manual program, like a hard coded synergies type situation that goes, sits in between and acts as the server using like a, a pie or something like that. We could probably code something like that where it would sit in between the two desktops, like my, both that and it would just be an always on with everything hooked into it. The problem with that then would be the access. Uh, again, I give up too much when I go to Xorg just because of that one stupid program. I would totally be about it. But alas, we are where we are. Maybe in a couple years, maybe in a couple years we'd do Wayland. <laughs> I said that a couple years ago. But, yeah, I mean, it's still the truth. I mean, shoot. I, I would love for that not to happen. Yeah, and Wayland still is having problems with G NVIDIA as well. Uh, because my NVIDIA GPU Vulkan won't work on X11, and Wayland doesn't have it working. Hardware acceleration. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, there we'll get there, guys. It's just, it's just going to take some time when it comes to Wayland. <laughs> Uh, it, and I think a lot of gnome and stuff is is starting to push it push it that way. You just have so much fragmentation that it's hard to. It just further fragments the community. What's a good monitor for 1080p for reading a lot of text? Oh, I'm not the guy to give you monitor advice. I am constantly regretting my monitor purchasing decisions, so I will bow out of this discussion 100% of the time. I just buy the cheap crap off Amazon, call it a day. <laughs> I'm the guy buying that no name. Uh, what is it? My monitor right now that I'm staring at is called Fire Legend. That should tell you all you need to know about me and my monitoring buying decisions. Is this a good monitor? Nah, it's probably one of the worst monitors I've ever had. Why don't I switch from it? I I I I can't bring myself. I paid money for it, so I'm going to use this crappy monitor until until something bad happens to it and I rejoice because something bad happened to it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I I, I've, I've done a couple reviews on the channel. I think, God, what was it? I remember when I first started, I was really hard up for, I wanted a, a 1440p monitor. So I got this monitor called Imbest. It's like a Korean monitor. And uh, I'm still using it. It's actually, 
Is, is, is that what I'm using up here? It is, yes. It's actually what I'm using for my stream monitor. It's been uh, this cheapo 1440p, 140 hertz or 144 hertz monitor, whatever it is. It's actually been a pretty darn good monitor. The buttons were awful. They're like stiff as hell. It doesn't look like much, but that's actually been a very good buy for me. Or, or not really a buy. I did a review on it on the channel back when I first started, but uh, I don't really do any hardware reviews. I'm just like, I'm just going to buy the hardware I need. Nobody cares what my hardware review opinion is anymore. <laughs> Uh, Fire Legend is a rebadged Apple Studio display, is it? It's a piece of crap is what it is. Uh, so hopefully the Apple Studio displays use something better than this thing. My M-Best Korean special up top beats the pants out of this Fire Legend, I'll tell you that. Just saying. Um. Alright, so yeah. That, that's the story with Wayland. I think we we don't have to beat a dead horse there. One day, one day it'll it'll be great. Um, our list hotkeys is in disrepair on that. Uh, yeah, I think we actually do need to um, change some of that. Mm. Let's just take this. I guess we'll hard code it. I think there's no way but hard coding it, but I think we can change that help guide because we're going to be doing this a bunch. So, darn it. Maybe I do code it right directly into because I don't want to do this absolute path type thing. Well, it's not absolute, but it's still I I was actually critiquing it and saying I probably shouldn't do it that way. But now that I'm doing it through an SH script, I'm like, there's no way a script could pull this in and tell and describe automatically what's going on here. I need to be the one. Well, shucks. All right. That's okay. We're going to just go back up, go to our old solution. Let's go while we talk through these things. Uh, can you reduce the font size on the top layout text? Right here? I guess that is a little bit big, isn't it? I think the title, let's see, what did we make? The, can we make the title text? Is right now, I think we do for the fonts, we do Meslo Nerd font 16 point, and then D menu font is that. But um, maybe we should go a little bit less with that probably gonna have to patch that because I don't see uh, where we could actually modify the title here that's a good point now that I'm looking at it well, right now I'm on arch I've been doing a lot of arch stuff lately but I mean I, you can use this same project on Debian that's the whole purpose of it is to just be completely agnostic because I can never make up my mind some days I'm like ah, oh, I like arch some days I'm like oh, I like Debian I mean, I, I honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. This is C. This is just old school C, C program. It's classic as it gets. So I think we modify this a bit. All right. So me, I wanted to get all fancy. And that's when I got into trouble. So we won't do that. Um... List all the hotkeys and then execute that. We'll just call this show keys. Okay. And then for this guy, we'll just say this is show keys. All right. We'll toss that guy in and then we're going to just make this whole function. We will hard code this in. Or we could actually make the command up here. It would make our config a little bit a little bit more but I almost prefer to put this in the config than anywhere else let's see instead of a sh can you just make it a function in the config.h yeah 
I see. It, it it's still getting all the reference from the other one. Um, I think we could do that. So, <laughs> yeah, we still need to do an LFS. I still need to do a Linux from scratch. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, still not a real Linux user until you do LFS. Oh, uh, thanks, Marie. Thanks for dropping by. Yeah. I don't do too many late night Saturday night streams, but I thought, ah, why not? Why not? Let's see here. Looking at everything. We're going to go back to the first solution it gave us. I feel, feel better about that. We'll grab the show keys and make that a function in here. So we'll have this call from a sh modify F1 show keys. That's fine. So we'll write that out. And then let's switch over to uh, DWMC and um, probably, I think there's like a show hide we could probably grab. Let's just yank that, probably put it like right here. Something, something in here. And we're gonna just call this like show keys, right? Grab that code. That'll be a great beginning. And then we're going to go show hide. And we'll just toss it just after this function. Show keys. And I want to see what this looks like. Let's just do a pseudo make. Or actually, just do a make. And... We have anything else going on here before I wipe out and shut down? Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I've actually compiled Linux on a potato for the most part. It just takes a lot longer, but uh, the Linux kernel is the really big thing. I think it's like, gosh, two million lines of code or something now. But you can strip out like Gen two does it the best on how Gen two sets up everything. You're still compiling a bunch on Gen two even with. Uh, it's package manager emerge. Um, it's it, it sets it up in almost like a Linux from scratch type of way, but a lot of times you're still compiling a lot of stuff. But this does work pretty well. I like it. Um, we did the make. We'll do the make install. And then let's just close this down. Dump this, and then we're just going to kill all processes relaunch so now we have this up chatterino uh, we'll just toss that to the side and then we do mod key f1 mod key f1 mod key f1 no that didn't work huh maybe it didn't spawn it oh that might not be working darn that would have been cool let's shift this to I like that, but it was not. I feel like instead of writing it like that, what if we, uh, instead of using a terminal, what if we, using xterm, we use dunced for the hotkeys for the help listing? So we could do a notify send and then specify the hotkeys. And you'd have to specify the timeout to get enough time to read the keys. Hmm. Yeah, flame shot icon's big too. Um, I still need to do some work with the sys tray over there. I think it's actually some, it's not the padding, it's just how the icons for the, uh, everything comes like Synergy comes with, I think a 12 point icon and then Flame shot comes with, I think, up to 36, and it just gets scaled to whatever the, the height is, where Synergy always is kind of tiny. Uh, I think Steam is the same way. So, like, when you're launching Steam, it launches, and I want to say its icon's about the same as Synergy. Let's see. Yeah. So, Flame shot does something different with its icons that cause that to be that way. I'm not sure what that is, though. All right, what uh, other pop-up could I do? I know there's a really neat... 
like awesome had a really cool lua base to it to where you could really format a help screen really easily so dunst probably isn't the way to do this and i don't like using maybe that method just like a pop-up hmm pop-up help menu d menu really d menu is just one line i thought though right all right let's see d menu help pop up let's see all right this person says dunst hotkey pop up script i used a lot of people have that uh, let's see what this uh github is there i use stw to have a desktop window containing an excerpt from top pre and df what is that oh that's just feeding it that script what 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 are they using on the script oh geez okay this is just straight up bash that's kind of cool and an interesting approach to say the least yeah <laughs> well as in you know i love ooh and how modular it is but my gosh working with like ooh and the yuck files and all the stuff that comes with it it's a bit of a nightmare <laughs> i get why people don't use it i mean just making a, a basic configuration change in it is is rough it is not user friendly at all so while you can do anything you want in ooh because of how modular it is it is like man it reinvented the wheel like 10 times over it's difficult <clears throat> all right stw what is this stw is a simple text window for x ah oh. Here, STD runs PS tree and renders an output above desktop wallpaper. I kind of like that. Simple text window for... Hmm. Is that suckless? That, that looks like suckless. There's ST, but okay. Yeah. Interesting. Not too many people are probably interested in this project. There's only 84 and it's been around for five years with last commit sometime in 2022 but it looks pretty simple <laughs> suckless wouldn't upload to github fair they they host all their own git which you know i like the independence aspect of that we never have to worry about it going down unless their servers you know crap the bed on us which you know it might happen well I kind of want to run this and just see what we can do with it. This STW um, program. Let's see. I know we're going going down a, a totally different path here, but I kind of dig it. Um, uh, GH repo clone. Oh, STW. Um, okay, so... With SDW installed, let's see what this looks like. I'm kind of curious about this command usage. It's this weird basic program for just output, it looks like. But that could be fun because it would open up a new window. And that new window could be a help guide. And since it's DWM, it'd be tiled perfectly. So this is a total wacky way of doing it, but fun nonetheless. So you can go F monospace okay let's see what we got so let's say we go monospace stw and then we feed it like echo um mod key plus f1 is help and then let's go like in and then go mod key plus one is workspace one. Oh no, it is workspace one. What does that give me? Does that work? No. <laughs> um, okay. It didn't. Okay, let's just do the example posted here. Let's just make sure this works. Oops. Oh, that. I, I kind of figured it would, like, make a new window and tile it, but it didn't. 
Look at that. Oh, wait. No. Where'd it go? Okay. So, if you just paste this, uh, instead of here, let's just take this. Let's just run it through, like, D menu, I guess. Well, I don't know if we can. Ah. No, that's not gonna work for us. What about, uh... Ah, oh, man. What if we do this? And let's just push this over to stream 3 and come back. It's not a window. How weird. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Yeah, that program is uh, completely worthless. But neat. I like just compiling weird programs like that. Um, well, let's just remove STW. All right. We'll 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 trash that. Uh, <laughs> did it put it in our bin folder too? Probably did. I, I did a pseudo make install. Oh, no, STW? No. All right, never mind. Uh, where did that install? Uh, let's just do locate STW. Uh, do we not have lo locate? Oh, what is that? P locate, yeah. Let's grab that. And then locate. Ooh, I think we gotta go update DB, right? One second. It's an unmanaged window, like it says. <laughs> Reading comprehension is not my strong suit, apparently. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's see. All right, so we have st. Oh, that's cool. So looking at all the stws we have, let's just kill this one and get rid of that man page all right cool it's uninstalled now gotta find that help what's a good way and if i tried to do let's just jump into here if we do the list hotkeys did that work it kind of worked oh which stw oh, oh that works too it's been a while since i used uh which oh yeah, which would have been better than locate. Locate's like a more aggressive way of finding files where which would be better for binaries. Thank you. I don't know why I lost that piece of knowledge somewhere in my brain. It got expelled with, I don't know, maybe watching a movie or something. <laughs> Other garbage in. I'm like, ah, right out of space. Um, all right. Um... We'll take this, instead of doing a grep or any of that, we'll take a look at how we want to implement this. We'll test it all out on this, because uh, right here it's going execute bin sh-c and then running the command. Which running the command like this seems probably, I bet you this is what's uh, my hang up uh, let's just grab something like this and then we're going to pipe that over into this X term and see if kitty does this properly. Cause I'm curious to see if it would launch a new instance, um, doing it this method. So let's say we do like an echo, ah, CMD equals and how, how, are, how are they structuring this? And they're just doing it like that's so weird i get what they're trying to accomplish there but it would actually output something close to because they put that quote there and then where's the next one right here okay that does work and then they pipe it into x term so it's all one line. So it would look something like that. And then it gets piped into like kitty dash E and then less. I'm not sure if that command would work. So that's probably what the actual output should look like. Failed to launch child less. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's up drummer? How you doing? It's a little late, but yeah trying to think about how I want to display hotkeys here 
in a method to where anybody could just type a key and then it just pop up and it would do it. I wanted to use Kitty for that since it's already installed and I like kind of its display, but maybe not pushing it right into console. I feel like we could feed this into a program and then we just install that program. It would just probably be a little bit cleaner. Display a uh, help menu. Yeah, help hotkeys in a screen from a dude this is gonna be so convoluted i'm trying to think of how to phrase this to gpt so a machine would understand it Ooh. <laughs> yeah yeah it's a bit of a boring game i love this though it's it's kind of tickling my brain lately I'm like, oh, a nice distraction from an SH file in Kitty Terminal. Just trying to think of how to launch Kitty from like a uh, regular prompt without Kitty actually being there. That's funny. Um, okay, yeah, so Kitty SH C, and then it would be command. That makes sense, but it's not absorbing that less. Yeah, desktop notifications might be, it, it, it's a good idea. Um, here, let's move chat to every everything. It's a good idea, but um, when we look at it, almost always that would be not big enough for us because I was thinking about using Dunce because that's a desktop notification way of doing it. Um, let's see what all we have. So there's Dunst, of course, keyboard driven, Mako, I've used a little bit. That's for Wayland. Then you got the old school stuff. Most of that's not really used these days. Um, and the idea, I guess it would time out a little too quickly. So I was thinking of just doing a pop up window. I mean, frankly, I could just push it to a wiki and be done with it. That would be the easy way of doing this. But I kind of wanted something a little more elegant, I guess. So, and if you do like a notification send, let's just, here, I'll just show you. So what that looks like. Let's say you have that. You have the hello world up here. So that's the example notification, which is fine. Um, and you can modify kind of how it appears and then disappears. But I kind of want it like toggled. And the notification demon's really meant to just show a notification and then have it fade away a little bit. But it would work for just that five seconds. And I think um, TLDR notify send. So we could do the timeout, something like that, and then do 50 seconds, right? So then when you got the test, it would just hang out there, up here, until you click on it. So you can do that and just set for a long timeout and then click on it, maybe. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's kind of a, a weird idea because maybe I don't do it that way. So if you send it twice, what happens? Doesn't, doesn't clear out. Oh, no, it does. Okay, yeah, and then when you do another one, it just spawns more. It replaces it, but it spawns it. Okay, um, it's a little hacky, but it's not necessarily bad. I think it's better than the method I'm trying right now where I'm like, hey, let me just spawn this all through here. Oh, you know, honestly, we could use this as a way to jump into go programming go has some really neat cli tools to where i know writing an entire program just for your help pop up it seems a little excessive here but that would be kind of fun maybe <laughs> yeah what should we write it in now we could write it in go we could we could write it in rust <laughs> 
Let's see. Let's have GPT write it. Let's let's do some Rust programming. I have I know absolutely nothing of Rust or its structure or anything. Other than it's a language that a lot of programmers like to use. Let's just have it. Let's just write have GPT do that for us and see what happens. It's the very first. <laughs> Let's see if we can have it hack out, knowing absolutely zero about a language. Jumping in, what what does it look like? Um, write a. Let, no, let, let's let's. We need to give GPT a lot of reference points here to understand what we're asking. I like it. So let's uh, let's say you are a rock star, Rust programmer that is better than any human okay let's give it a little confidence booster i need you to write a simple rust program that displays a help guide from terminal no no, no. a help guide that designs a program that shows all the hotkeys on the system you are yeah the system the user is on well yeah you could write it in python but that's boring <laughs> I, I, I mean, come on. There's like a gajillion different ways we could do this a lot simpler. Let's choose the absolute hardest way that I can think of in my brain and just see what happens. I think that that would just be fun. Rust, why not? Let's have it write its own program that displays this. All right, this doesn't make any sense. I need you to write a simple Rust program that designs a program uh, uh, that shows all the hotkeys on the system it is on. The program will have all this information in an array. Let's see what happens. I, I That doesn't make any sense, but let's see what it spits out. Okay, that's a simple array, but can it do it in a new one? <laughs> Real programmers do it in simply. Um, now, Put that in a program that, uh, jeez, let me think about this, that will compile, no, 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 that will compile on a Arch Linux Xorg system. <laughs> yeah, this is just for fun. <laughs> This is us just messing around. <laughs> kind of just like, what can this do exactly? All right, so we created the, okay, it's setting up the cargo package. Okay, that makes sense. But it's so far away from actually listing. I guess this print ln function, possibly. But what that what's that going to print out to? It's not going to be able to spawn a new... Um, it's not going to be able to spawn a new... A new terminal... Oh, it's just it, it's not gonna be we're not gonna be running this from tty so that's not gonna work yeah so this program needs to run in dwm uh, cargo is i think it's packaging like uh, my my new brain around rust it says cargo some type of packaging well i don't know if that's true or not let's see what what do we got so I've done cargo packages and in NPM packages and those types of things, used Rust programs before, and even compiled Rust programs, but never have I even looked at the code. Hmm. Well, that might work, but then you'd have to run it. This seems so. <laughs> it seems so. Uh, such a roundabout way of doing something that would be hilarious. <laughs> I don't know why it is. This is such a ridiculous. I don't know what I was thinking, but funny nonetheless. Kind of want to just run it to see see what happens. But let's see. 
this is probably taking all the other context from some of my other stuff I've asked it over the night. Man, some of the syntax, look at how it's structured. So fn, so function main, let con, so let is basically just issuing and saying the variable equals this, format that. I wonder why all programmers love Rust. Okay, let output, so you're issuing output command to sh. You say an argument dash C argument command, which would grab this. I guess the ampersand says, hey, this is an actual variable dot output, I guess calls the output over here. Expect failed to execute command. Hmm. I guess logically. I mean, then again, GPT could just be giving me a bunch of nonsense. It's fun. Oh, what is that? <laughs> the program is a tangent to the actual task. <laughs> We're getting meta here. Oh, uh, I love it. Um, well, let's see. Let's throw this all together and see what happens. How hard can it be? We could learn Rust in a little bit. So, <clears throat> explain to me a complete newbie to programming how to make this a rust program compile and use from key uh, from terminal we'll just say terminal all right here's the step by step install rust i don't think i'm gonna install it like that we're gonna install it through through the aur we make a new project okay with cargo in it we write the Rust code. Nano. Ooh. All right. We're 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 not complete noobs. <laughs> Don't forget to replace that with your config H. Build and run the program. Well, that seems easy enough. Okay. So, I think we have, when we were talking about, like, uh, yeah, just Pac-Man S. We'll just grab that. Um... So let's just install Rust. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay. Cool. Let's come out. Uh, I'm going to build directly in there. Let's just go repo create uh, Rust help. Uh, oh, I guess let's just make that. I'll make it public just so people can make fun of me. Rust help. Um, all right. Rust help. And then we are gonna do um, cargo in it. All right, created a bar, create created a binary application package. Okay, that's cool. Uh, source main rs vim source main rs. Okay, yeah. Oh, look at that! It has a little hello world. That's pretty. And then you just copy the code in, and then just go cargo run, and it packages it all up. I mean, that seems easy enough. All right, cool. Um, config file. Let's just go home DWM. Oh, actually, I think that's GitHub. DWM Titus config dot H. Um, then we do the format and then it just spits it out, huh? Let's see what that looks like. Nice. Uh, it was, so we, we added all that in. We configured it. All right. We are now Rust programmers. Cargo run. All right. So hotkeys are null, forward slash, null. Cool. Um, it did do something, right? What's where, Where's the binary? Um, how to make binary with Rust. With... I was just say how to make binary. We'll just talk to it like a caveman. Cargo build. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. I know. I'm going to fix all that. We're going to change that around anyways. Okay. We're at the release stage. We're going to print out hotkeys are null null. <laughs> because we pointed it to the wrong damn place. But I don't care. Oh, and then you would just copy it into the user bin folder. Look at that. It even adds that. That's neat. Okay. Really? Is it that easy? I mean, that does seem easy. So it's just 
build release. Okay. Okay, and then it's, there's a release folder. Um, where to put it exactly? Target? What's what's under target? Release. Rust help. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay yeah that's that works oh man that's cool all right neat all right cool let's change some of this around this is terrible um so this is the command it's spitting out i guess for the format um what if we give it feed all the hotkeys and say put this in a echo command Ooh. I mean, obviously, just doing an echo command seems too easy. What's the best way to format this to make it look cool? Yeah. All right. Hotkeys from config.h. I want to be super cool and have people think I'm awesome. How do I type my hotkeys out that makes it seem like i am awesome that's like completely incoherent let's see what happens i mean that's actually pretty close all right new cool hotkeys gonna have to use all right we're gonna use colored hotkey string hotkeys hmm really all right let's see what this looks like um all right, let's just come back here. Um, let's switch it out. Cargo run. Oh no, what happened? Unresolved imported color. Ooh, what's that mean? Oh, did I miss something? Oh, I forgot the dependencies. See, there's a color dependency in the cargo toml. I bet that's uh. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Look at that. Okay. Now that we got the dependencies, does it build? Oh, yes. Now we need stay cool to be blinking. I'm sorry. Um, can you make stay cool blink? All right. Escape codes. Be aware that supporting blinking text is not universal across terminals. All right. Simple blink, bold blink red at the end. All right, I like it. Stay cool. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but it says blink. What happened there? Here's how you can modify the... That's the same text. I guess it doesn't blink because of limitations in Kitty. Hmm, maybe. So no blinking. What about a gradient? Can you make the colors gradient? Ooh, no, that's a little bit much, probably. The blink depends on whether the terminal supports blinking attribute. If blinking is not supported, the text will usually just display normal non-blink. And that's pretty much how we compiled it. Mm, all right. Man, that's... It already thought of it. That is neat. And if we look at... Uh, jump over into... Uh, what do I call this? Rust help? All right, cargo run. So my super cool copy paste. Okay. Well, I mean, we can make that work. I'm trying to think, what else do we want to add to that? Can we add a picture maybe? Maybe maybe we add a picture. And well, adding a picture into certain terminals, that would mess people up. So it's probably best we don't overcomplicate it. But we could add ASCII art into it. Hmm. I think we need to do that. Instead of stay cool, I want to use ASCII art. Alacrity should work. Uh, Alacrity's pretty, pretty much like Kitty. How's it gonna do the ASCII art, you think? Oh, cool. All right. So, let's just take that. <laughs> Oops, quit. What happened? Oh yeah, I got it over here. My bad. All right, let's uh, 
put that here. Um, well, so ASCII art generator. Yeah. What are, what are we going to use? Probably like 3D and the, ooh, go, go the bold style. Throw a little shadow behind it. That's kind of 280s for my liking. Go bloody with it. Ooh. Electronic. Kind of gives me like, I don't know, vibes from, uh, from that one portal game. Um, stronger than all. Okay. Okay. That's got like 90s video games on it. All right. Let's see, Razor. Uh, Figlet, I'm not a big fan of. Okay. Graceful. Dancing. Hmm. Let's just flip through here and see if we find something we really like. Uh, I think Doe. Doe font looks good. Let's just go with that. We'll just call CTT. Bam. Call it a day. Um, copy it. Done. All right. Paste that in. All right. Cool. Cargo run. Uh-oh. Did I miss a squirrely brace somewhere? I think I did. One, one too many squirrely braces. <laughs> there we go. Getting the Keygen vibes. All right. Well, obviously, we, we've got that now. But we need the ASCII art. I need the ASCII art to be rainbow colored. Or actually, no, like a blue, blue gradient. Make it a blue gradient for me. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we need to still adjust a lot of that. Okay, hotkey dimmed. Okay, now it's going, is it putting into a vector? Is that what vec is? Okay, we're going from basic print LN. Now it's doing colors. Oh, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So here's our ASCII art lines. We'll just take this vector, copy it, right? Boom. Ooh, that makes it look pretty too. And then we'll just grab all this. Man, that looks neat. I gotta say. Okay, what do we got? Uh, no to- oh, Oops, my bad. Did I not do quotations? Oh, it wants each line quoted and then comma separated at the end. Oh, I'm such a, such a dummy. All right, substitute. We're going to go front of the line and then just add stuff. Okay, yeah. Um, we'll just add that. And then, oh, let's just add that back. Substitute end of line with quote. So just a quote comma, quote comma. Perfect. All right. So now we've done that. Okay, I must have screwed something up there. Getting close, getting close. What did I do? What did I do? Yeah. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> Whatever, man. A lot of people love learning a new language at like 1130 at night on a Saturday. You're the nerd. But why did it cut this off? Um, feel like I missed something there. Um, hmm. Let's go Mason. Do I have a rust? Rust? It's gotta be like a rust analyzer. Ooh, here we go. Rust analyzer. Let's install that. Can you tell me what's wrong with this rust analyzer? No. No, you cannot. Damn it. You need to add a color line for each text line. Really? Think? The weird thing here is it kind of runs. So you got one, two, three. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, so I have, if we look here, we have 16 lines, but only one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's only outputting, if we look, six lines of text. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Thank you. That's the most obvious thing. I'm such an idiot. All right. So expand this 
to be um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have a total of uh, if we look 16. So we'll just make the bottom five. Wait, yeah, we have a total of 16. We have six. So seven, eight. Um, let's see how much how much is that yeah we still need one more too 15. so if we look yeah 15 and 15 <laughs> that's cool oh uh, so so some the simple maths I fail at oh that's cool all right neat all right cool then we just expand it out can we now implement this into what happens if we run this from run this program directly from oh, something let's see that's so ridiculous but so hilarious at the same time there's so many better ways of doing this all right so we got our our simple things now we just gotta make our hotkeys uh, probably the easiest way for doing this i would probably want to for hotkey and hotkeys, print that yellow dimmed. Okay, great. So we'll do probably like mod one work space one. All right. And we'll just replace this and this over here as well. Oh, man. I'm replace five. I like it. <laughs> That's right. Now I can say I've done something in Rust. Uh, you peasants that use everything else are nothing to me. I am now a Rust programmer. <laughs> All right, cool. I like that. Ooh, we need like a Matrix style thing of doing this, like a, a grid of sorts. That'd be neat too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I remember Visual Basic. I don't think I ever really got into it that much, though. GPT kind of makes everything easy now to where it's like, ah, you know, I always wanted to kind of program in this. Let's just uh, write this program that I'm thinking up and then you just kind of hack around and get it going and like learn the basics of kind of like the structure of the language. And then you're like, oh, that's cool. I kind of want to do this. And then you just keep keep building on that one language. Like every language is capable of pretty much everything, <laughs> at least everything I, I want to do. I mean, hell, you saw what I did with PowerShell and, like, XAML. Uh, I was like, okay, well, if you can do all of that with PowerShell, just imagine an actual programming language that's, like, meant to be powerful. <laughs> oh, you've been using Bard extensively. Really? Bard has given me such crap results. Although, I was using PowerShell mainly for the Bard results, and Bard does really, really bad with PowerShell. Almost every result it gave me in PowerShell was incorrect. It was citing incorrect libraries. It kept getting confused with... Uh, it was doing really bad with C-sharp, too. PowerShell, C-sharp, and... Yeah. No, I, I don't think I've ever actually gotten a good result from Bard. Sad to say. But then again, I haven't tried, like, Go. I'm sure, like, Go would be really good in Bard. Yeah, you can have the same mouse sensitivity in Linux as you have in Windows. Um, do you use mouse acceleration or not? Yeah, I mean, GPT's like, I agree 100% with rats here. 100%. Bard is terrible compared to GPT. At least from my testing. Although Copilot's kind of nice. It's like its own thing, though. Like, Bard and GPT are like kind of like these all-in-one kind of things. But Copilot's like a... It kind of like detects how you're programming and then it just auto fills crap for you like one usually like one or two lines nothing that big and then um, last week we learned about refactoring and I was like oh dude this is kind of cool because you can learn so much just refactoring your code um, which I've never done before so I was like that's really neat too yeah yeah, yeah. we're using four right now I paid for the, the four just to kind of mess around a little bit more. And it's a lot of fun. So we got 
that, but I kind of want to put it in grid form. Let's see what 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 are all the hot keys we want to grab here. Um, let's just cat. Uh, what do we have? Um, we'll do mod key R for D menu for mod key R for D menu. Okay. I feel like uh, let's go. Let's push this over to number two, right? Uh, we'll push this to number three. What, what's the number three again? Okay, number three is nothing. All right, perfect. Uh, let's grab D menu. Next up, we'll just call. Pull up. Would a noob know what D menu is? Maybe not. Mod key R. Um, we'll call this one. Oh, I guess we'll just call it D menu for now. But it could be Rofi. It could be like the start menu kind of thing. Just call it start menu. <laughs> Linux people ever cringe. Um, what do we else? We got uh, mod key X for spawning like kitty terminal. Um, so we'll just like grab all of that. Let's put kitty terminal. What's the next one? B for brave. Call this one brave. Uh, browser. And probably E for Thunar. We're not going to go too crazy here. I don't want to bore you all to death. Uh, so what we'll do. Can we move over? Mm. And we'll put Thunar. File browser. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That's done with the patch, uh, Jap. Uh, that's just sys menu. Right now, my DWM, it, it's all on GitHub, too, if you want to look at my patches. Uh, what I've been doing for a lot of my patching, um, if you take a look, I make a directory for called patches, and I try and put most of my patches that I'm using in here. I have written some patches to go along with this. Certain things that were bugging me, like when I was flipping between all my different workspaces, I like to kind of have chat over on the right hand side and by defaults DWM always selects like this version not the main focused window so I made a patch to fix that and then I think I did some modifications to up top as well uh, I think like X resources and some things to pull uh, this certain theming and then the scripting is also on there but yes you can grab all this from like DWM Titus of the actual github uh, I do need to fix this. Oh, man. This looks terrible right now. But, oh, should we make like a bin? If I create a binary, will the Rust binary trans, will that work across all systems? Like, it won't matter if it's on Arch or Debian or anything. Probably, I would imagine. I don't think the binary would change at all because it's just such a simplistic program but maybe not yeah we actually used gbar on a hyper i think it was a a hyperlamb implementation the last time i did yeah man it's fun just kind of tinkering around with a lot of these these stuff like just you can do anything now like there's so many tools at your disposal like i'm not a coder i'm not a programmer i don't do this stuff for a living it's just fun messing around but you can literally grab any program now and just modify it to your whim as long as you understand like certain things like functions variables and some some top-down program but i think anybody can just grab it and do whatever you want with enough checking refactoring testing you can you can do any language with almost zero knowledge which is kind of insane to me <laughs> i mean to an extent. So let's take this code. And what I want to do now that it, this is pretty much working, I mean, I think we could get this all perfect. And if we do like cargo run, this is what it now looks like. So someone that would hit that could print out this hotkey type thing. But let's take it and break it. <laughs> like my favorite thing to do so 
what we'll do let's see we're, what do we have let's take our main function all right and then we're gonna come over here we're gonna create a new chat actually no 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 screen resolution has to be set to your preferences so that that's something to do Sarah for sure in the future um, let's uh, can you make the hotkey print out a table with multiple columns and refactor this code all right yeah, let's see what happens so i'm telling it hey, here's my main function from rust that i don't know how to do pretty much anything in uh, let's make multiple columns for the hotkeys and refactor the code what's it gonna do oh okay we got a new dependency for cargo.toml we're adding pretty table in okay neat print hotkeys table add row hotkeys yellow ascii art is it breaking each how's it breaking the lines up i wonder yes oh good night chief see you in the morning chief all right ah hey gain how you doing thanks for the tier one man Uh, screen resolution isn't really done in script form. I would usually hard code that into X11 or, or you know, you could always uh, set it on startup as well. I can't remember which one I did. You could also do a display manager like light DM and set it there, which if you look, oh, shoot. Did I do light DM? I feel like I did. Did I do a display script? I don't think I did a display script here. Yeah, I just did an auto login. Um, but you could do using light DM, specify like an SH script using X Randar, which if you look display script set up here, uncomment this out and then you can set it to like a SH and do like X Randar and then just say, I want these resolutions at this refresh rate and you're good. So I'm running at 1080p at 144 here. Um, and if you're unfamiliar of like how to get like a proper syntax in X Randar, you could install a tool called A Randar, which is really cool. So you could do A Randar and say, hey, um, these are my resolutions, orientation, this is my primary monitor, blah, blah, blah. So you get it all set, and you're like, okay, cool. You can apply it, and then you can save it, and it saves it as a layout file. So uh, we'll just call this test, close it. And then we're just going to go over to, uh, oops, <laughs> we'll jump over to our home directory and then go into screen layouts. It starts with a dot cat test. So this creates that entire display script that you need for your light DM. So this is one method of doing it. Um, and it's pretty good. There's nothing wrong with using this method. Another method would be just going right into x11 and xorg.com. Um, you could create a file in here that would specify like the screen, the orientation, refresh, mode set. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, you could do x in it, which did I do an x in it RC? Man, that would have been a first. Did I? No, I didn't put it here. Maybe I put x in it rc here i don't even know how i said it <laughs> i did oh i'm such a goob okay yeah i'm launching dwm through my x in it rc um instead of doing i think i bypassed the manager altogether that's hilarious okay yes okay right right okay <laughs> So yeah, there's a lot of ways to, to get around and mess around to uh, launch and, and set screen resolutions without doing any modifications. So I don't, I kind of like to stay away from the script. I like to just kind of hard code it into the system itself. Um, in this one, I don't think I'm really doing much of that, but I could set it up doing, doing those other methods. Um, as far as this, 
I think this is fun. This is this was a blast with the whole rust jumping in there. I don't know why I decided to do it this way, but uh, kind of wild. Do you care about NVIDIA drivers in Linux? Not really. Um, if you're like really into Linux and you really want to and you really want to make things and live in it, yeah, just buy an AMD graphics card. Sell that at NVIDIA, buy an AMD. I mean, really, that's the solution. Unless you really want to... Uh, you could do, like, a Debian stable release or something like that, but sitting on NVIDIA cards with, like, proprietary drivers, you don't want to be on any rolling releases. There's a lot of little caveats that you're going to not enjoy 100%. So, for me, if I'm using that system with Linux... I'm always using an AMD graphics card. Almost always. There's times where I've used NVIDIA, and you can. It's not like you can't, but there's little gotchas here. Especially if you're doing a lot of hacking around and tinkering like I am. You're going to break it so many times. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things you can do, like no mod set and other things like using Bash to bypass and get like NVIDIA working even with bad drivers and... Uh, if you understand TTY and, and getting down into the system to strip out and reinstall drivers, it it can work just fine. But for a newer user, man, a lot of these questions you're asking, I, I would just say you have such a better time with AMD. Um, is your prompt power level 10K? now? it's just Starship. Yeah, and, and yeah, you totally can learn the hard way. I'm not saying you can't, like... I still recognize that NVIDIA is still like the top dog, but uh, yeah, that's that's just how it is. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm going to shut it down for the night. I just wanted to get a quick stream in, do just kind of mess around. I think I'm going to do a lot more of these just kind of mess around streams that don't really make it to YouTube, but I really wanted to get more into learning just different stuff and have fun, like jumping into Rust for the first time was um i can kind of get why people like it you know uh yeah i understand the structure of it's kind of nice especially coming from c or c c sharp i'm kind of like ah okay yeah that is very straightforward so i get it i'm, I'm definitely gonna mess around with it a little more i think i might actually continue this hotkey project in rust just to just for 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 just grins to have like an actual binary for the hotkey this looks excessive but would be hilarious too to ship like my dwm with its own binary but all right guys see you later i'll stream some other time uh i'll try and stream i'm trying to get back to streaming a little bit more even if it's just an hour or two here and there um just just for fun oh the starship theme yeah um, let's see, where did I grab that? Um, I think it's in my Bash profile, actually. Um, yeah. Where is that? What is my Bash? My Bash. Yeah, here you go. Um, do I have IX? Oh, I don't have IXIO here. Yeah, darn it. Wait, no, I have to. I can just shift it to you, right? No. I don't have my IXIO. Oh, that's just a tragedy. One second. I got to get this. All right. Um, let's do one second. Okay. No. Okay. Cool. No. Come on. G give me what I want. No. Hmm. Sad face. Okay, well, that didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. Was um, IX1 paste file. Okay. Can't remember the syntax I was using for this. Anywho, I gotta go. Ah, oh, man. I know I'm a PowerShell profile on Windows. This is working. <laughs> oh, man. Anyhow, yeah. Um,. My bash in GitHub has has that, um, which is right here. 
Uh, what was the last time I messed around with my bash? I don't remember, but this is where it's all at. Yeah, change font size. Oh, yeah, it's too much on the title. I 100% agree with you. Thanks for that, Sarah. Uh, I'll definitely do that as well. Yeah. No, nah, no worries, man. That's awesome. Appreciate everybody just hanging out with me. It was lovely Saturday night. It was fun. It was a fun, fun experiment. Uh, I also got to figure out my, my power off command. But deuces all. Have a great night. Um... I'll see y'all uh, probably Tuesday. I don't think I'll stream before then. So I'll see y'all on Tuesday. Later.